we are going to start right with the outcome. The research here is just astounding. And as you read through it, you read it over more than once because you want to make sure that what you're reading is actually what you are seeing. All right, the research here basically is a different approach to treating bacteria, or I should say path pathogens. Uh, because what the researchers are doing here, I would consider more of a proof of concept than a preclinical, is actually helping form a friendly relationship with these pathogens as opposed to an antagonistic one. How? By simply giving the pathogen what it needs to survive. It sounds so counterintuitive, but let's get right into the research as follows, and hopefully you see it as I do. But to proceed, LD100. LD100 means as that, I should say, in this case, the Citrobacter is given to this population of animals, it should result in a 100% fatality rate, meaning no animals survive. What they did here was simply this with the Citrobacter. They gave the exposure, then they fed one group of animals their normal diet, the other group, in this case mice, uh, they gave supplemental iron for 14 days. We're not going to get into dosages and things like that. We're just going to review the study because it's an animal study and it's too early to say if the same effects will be in humans. But they gave the other group supplemental iron for 14 days and then stopped. And this was the results. To proceed, by day 20, all the infected mice in the no iron group had succumbed to the infection, died. Not a fan of animal studies like this. However, though, the research is just too, too vital. However, in the supplemental iron group, 100% of the infected mice were alive and healthy. Even at day 30, the research actually went way beyond 30 days, but we'll get more to that in a second. The research has found even though, even if this is the part that's jaw dropping, even if they dose the animals with 1,000 times the lethal dose, 1,000 times, meaning they're basically swimming in Citrobacter. They survived. They did the dose, the one, uh, LD100, other pathogen, a two-week course of iron kept the animals alive and healthy. To proceed, Citrobacter, for those that are familiar, you can do a simple Google search. You can read all up on it, and you can read why it's such an incredibly, uh, which why it is a concern, as opposed to a growing concern. But to proceed with the research itself. The public release of the title is called Bribing Bacteria to Play Nicely is Good for Everyone. And so it's, again, it sounds counterintuitive. Instead of trying to wipe out the bad bacteria by practically killing the host, all of a sudden we play nice. But to proceed, antibiotic use is driving an epidemic of antibiotic resistance as more susceptible bacteria are killed, but more resilient strains live on and multiply with abandon. But if antibiotics aren't the end all solution for infectious disease, what is? The Salk Institute researchers report that given mice dietary iron supplements enabled them to survive a normally lethal bacterial infection and result in the later generations of those bacteria being less virulent. The approach, which appears in the Journal of Cell in August 9, 2018, demonstrates in preclinical studies that the non-antibiotic-based strategies, such as nutritional interventions, can shift the relationship between the patient and the pathogens away from antagonism toward cooperation. To divert a little bit, the supplemental iron, what that basically did in this case for the animals was create an insulin resistance, I mean more glucose built up in the intestinal tract, henceforth giving the uh, pathogen the food supply that it needed to be content. So it's kind of like having a bunch of people come over to your house, they're hangry, or I should say hungry, uh, angry because they're hungry, and you give them a box of donuts. That's kind of what happened in this case. Even though I'm not advocating eating donuts, but to the pathogen, they were happy. The antibiotics and antimicrobials are one of the most important advances in medicine, and we definitely need to continue efforts focused on developing new class of antimicrobials. All right, to quote the researcher, but we need to learn from history and think about other ways to treat infectious diseases. Our work suggests that instead of killing bacteria, so counterintuitive, if we promote the health of the host, we can tame the behavior of the bacteria so they don't cause disease. We can actually drive the evolution of less dangerous strains because they're kind of happy, well-fed and happy. So to continue with that thought, interestingly, Eris, I'm hoping to pronounce their name appropriately, and her team found a, a year later, a year later, animals that were infected with Citrobacter and had received a single, just once, a single two-week course of dietary iron were alive and healthy. 
and surprisingly still colonized by the pathogen in their gastrointestinal tract. To quote, this was so exciting to us because it suggested that we basically drove the evolution of weakened strains of the pathogen. To determine if this was the case, the team sequenced the genomes of Citrobacter that were isolated from the animals and found that in the genes that served for causing disease, the bacteria had accumulated mutations, rendering those genes non-functional. This implied that by increasing the amount of glucose available to the pathogen, making it happy, so to say, the team was preventing the bacteria from turning on genes that caused more symptoms of sickness in its host, or making the pathogen hostile to the host. And over time, by having its nutritional needs met, the pathogen was becoming less antagonistic and more cooperative. Incredibly, incredibly counterintuitive and a totally different way of looking at pathogens as possible symbiotes. Fascinating, fascinating research. Before I proceed, also keep in mind that iron worked well in this case. However, the researchers do stress that, for example, feeding yourself tons of iron in regard to malaria or other things like that could be very problematic. This Consider this research more of a proof of concept, meaning it needs to be followed up on, and then eventually try it in humans. And if it works like this, then Citrobacter basically becomes, at least as far as a hostile pathogen, a thing of the past. Again, I hope you find this information of use. The UI citation will be listed for you to follow on your own. Incredible research, jaw-dropping, just phenomenal. I hope I'll see you all again next week. And thank you very much for listening once again. And as always, all to be repetitive. Thank you. Catch that. Bye.